why do you give the people closest to you the benefit of the doubt, even if they hurt you? Because you trust that they love you, right? You trust that it was a mistake. You trust that, you know, they're not gonna do it again. You trust in their intention, that it was pure, that it wasn't to make you feel a certain type of way. You rationalize it because you have been taught subconsciously that truly caring for someone and loving someone means you tolerate their bullshit sometimes right? That bullshit meaning mistreatment. I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to really think about it. And I know this podcast is off to a really harsh start, but I promise you it's in order to help you realize something. Maybe get out a journal and write down this question because I had to do this for myself today and it was a big wake-up call. To what extent have you tolerated self-destructive behavior in the name of self-love? And what I really mean is the idea of doing it for the plot. I'm going back to my shitty ex for the plot but I love myself. I'm gonna take my anger out on this person because, you know, I love myself. I'm breaking my sobriety for the plot because, you know, I love myself. Like, at what point does loving yourself become self-destructive? And what is your relationship with self-love to where you guilt yourself for your own self-destructive behaviors and then you just completely avoid yourself? Because oftentimes, this is what I've noticed in my life, right? If you're new here, hi, welcome. This is the Improvement for Imbeciles podcast where I share ways I'm getting my shit together so that you can get your shit together. I've been going through it, (laughs) y'all. I'm not even gonna hold you. I am going through it right now. So we're in this together. I notice that when I do something self-destructive, right? I'll justify it by detaching myself from who I really am, right? I'll have this disconnection with myself. I don't know what it is. I'll just feel like I'm not myself. What you must realize is the ways you treat yourself in the moments you don't feel the best is what really matters when it comes to self-love because you're not always going to feel love for yourself. But does that mean you don't have self-love? No, you're not always going to feel this thrill of doing something and protecting yourself and knowing that maybe this thing isn't the best for me because I love myself. The most important lessons I've learned about self-love have been in times where I've sabotaged myself. It has been in times where I've put myself in a situation that is less than ideal, which had taught me to be more selective and protect myself. And those experiences shouldn't be neglected. You shouldn't hate yourself for them. You should allow them to build a new and deeper level of self-love within yourself. You matter, the way you treat yourself matters, and the way you talk to yourself in the moments that don't feel the best is what really matters and what really defines your self-love for you. You must give the benefit of the doubt to yourself like you give others the benefit of the doubt, the people that screw you over. You can't just get to a point with yourself where you're feeling these bad negative emotions and go, I'm just a terrible person person. You gave these other people the benefit of the doubt when they were screwing you over. Why are you not giving yourself the same benefit of the doubt, despite the fact that you might have done something that's self-sabotaging, right? Despite the fact that you've been self-destructive. There's only one person you should grant unlimited chances to, and that is yourself. Because at the end of the day, you are who has your back. You are who picks yourself back up after someone screws you over. You are the one that is giving yourself the benefit of the doubt, despite the fact that you might have gone against your best judgment. This thing you're going through happened for a reason. It happened to develop a deeper level of this love. And until you see that, you'll never be able to get to this idealized point of self-love that everyone's talking about. Do you want to look like you love yourself online or do you actually want to love yourself? Because I feel like a lot of you shy away from doing the work that's actually intense and real because you just want to look like you love yourself. But do you really love yourself? And it's okay if the answer is no, because sometimes I look in the mirror and I go, today, I don't really feel good about myself and maybe I don't love the way I'm acting, right? But like, you need to have an affirmation to yourself that like, no matter how I'm feeling, I love myself. And as superficial as it sounds, like, love yourself, the bad parts, the good parts, like everything. You can't just pick and choose or else you'll constantly be in a battle of like, am I deserving of love because of this one quality of myself? Fuck no. You're deserving of love because you exist and that's enough reason. I feel like we always try to find a reason out of loving ourselves when it's like, that's bullshit. We don't need a reason to say that we love ourselves. 
right? Why do we have to explain to the world why we love ourselves and how we love ourselves? I think the social media aspect of loving yourself makes things 10 times harder because we all have to like come on here and act like, oh my god, I just feel great about myself and I love this aspect and I love this and I love that. And it's like, I mean, maybe I'm just projecting because I know not everyone (laughs) is on social media. I know some of y'all will comment and be like, girl, I don't even go on Instagram and like more power to you. But I think the world we've kind of cultivated promotes more self-hate and self delusion than it does true love. The only perspective that has allowed me to develop an unwavering sense of self-love is the idea that people come into your life to test your self-love in small ways. And I'm not saying they're coming into your life like, oh, I'm trying to make this person hate themselves. Like, they're not consciously thinking these things. But when you cultivate self-love and then you meet a person, maybe it's romantically, maybe it's in a friendship, they will test your boundaries in small ways, right? We've all heard of the idea that, like, you give someone an inch and they take a mile. And I think that's so true for relationships. And that doesn't mean it's intentional and that everyone's out to get you. That simply means that there are ways you need to maintain this self-love. Naturally, you're going to be put in situations where you have to stand up for yourself. Every single day, you choose to be around certain people that make you feel a certain way about yourself and reflect back to you something that you already believe about yourself, whether you're aware of that belief or unaware of that belief. And something that's really helped me is letting go of the idea that I have to make the right decision in order to love myself, right? We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to know and trust that when we make a decision, it's out of love when sometimes it's not out of love and it's so much more nuanced and complicated than that. But at the end of the day, you have to stick with your decision and love yourself and who you used to be for making that decision. You can't hate yourself because you made a choice that is somehow compromising. You simply need to know how to talk to yourself and connect back with yourself. And that's the first question I need you to ask yourself. How do I connect back with myself? When we're sacrificing ourselves, like we know we're doing it, right? Deep, deep down, we have that gut feeling that's like, "Mm, I probably shouldn't do this. And we still do it. How do you connect back with yourself when you have done something that sabotaged yourself? I want you to think of someone you love, someone who has maybe let you down in a certain way. How did you go about forgiving them? Did they apologize? Did they make efforts to show they've changed? Did they prove to you that they were worthy of you giving them the benefit of the doubt? Most of the time when it's someone you care about, they might have not even done all of those three things. You just kind of gave them the benefit of the doubt because, you know, you love them, right? And so for yourself, if you're having a really, really hard time connecting back to that part of yourself, you need to make amends with yourself in some way, shape, or form. And this can be in a small way or a big way. And I know it's silly just having the solution be like asking yourself a question, but oftentimes when we're in a pattern of self-destruction, we are so caught up in getting that external validation and proving to others why they should love us that we forget to prove to ourselves why we love ourselves. And there's levels to loving yourself, right? I don't really buy into the idea that none of your actions matter and you can just love yourself through everything you do. No. Your actions are a direct reflection of your values. You are not going to take an action that is self-destructive if you've kind of been there, done that, right? You're gonna be like, "Mm, I don't feel like hating myself today. Put yourself in the shoes of someone you really care about. And if they were in the situation you were in, how would you react? How would you protect them? Realizing that the way I would protect the people I care about is not the way that I show up for myself. And oftentimes I'm very much so people pleasing, you know? I just allow people to treat me away because subconsciously, I think that's what I deserve, right? And that sucks to admit to ourselves, but once we identify that, we can wake up to the delusion to sacrifice ourselves in order to feel loved or not even necessarily sacrifice ourselves, just feel guilty for existing. That pressure that you put on yourself to keep the peace and not make anyone mad is killing you. It's killing your self-love. It's killing your self-dignity. It is killing the respect you have for yourself because people don't always have good intentions. And I hate that that's the world we live in, but at the end of the day, there are bad people. And if you're still listening to this at this point in the video, like, let's just be real. You have a lot of empathy right? You are a good person. And it's so difficult as a good person to really get into the minds of people who lack empathy or don't understand these things. Like, not everyone is given the awareness pack, 
right? Like if you are aware, be grateful. Love yourself for your awareness because there's so many people walking around who don't even have the awareness and do bad things to people because they act on their emotions. And so unfortunately, naturally you attract people who don't always have the best intentions or will just take, 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 take. They're not thinking about how their actions really impact other people. If someone you care about came to you with a genuine concern of like, hey, are you okay? You haven't really called or texted me. I just want to check in on you. Would you blame them for the fact that you weren't reaching out? Or would you apologize and give an explanation? Oh, hey, sorry, I was busy. You know, I haven't been in the best mood recently. Think about that and then apply it to the relationship you have with yourself. Because sometimes when I'm avoidant of self-reflection, I realize that I just need to say hi, right? Like I just need to say hi to myself. Hey, are you good? I think sometimes we forget the power of really checking in on ourselves during the hard times we're going through and realizing that you're not always going to feel this happiness and love for yourself. Like you're not always going to feel on top of the world and in peak confidence, right? Because we go through things in order to test that. And through those periods where you may be being tested on your self-love, you need to remind yourself who you are. You need to remind yourself of the value that you provide to people. You are so worthy. There are so many people in your life that you provide value to. When you feel disconnected from a part of yourself, it's not always because you just don't accept that part of yourself or you don't love that part of yourself, right? It's because we have been taught that neglecting ourselves is actually rewarded. There is a lot of people who benefit from your lack of boundaries and lack of self-love, even in the small ways, right? Naturally, when you've been taught this framework, you sacrifice yourself to feel better, you'll get an ego boost because it'll feel really, really good. That's the weird thing about self-sabotage is like, oh my God, this is kind of fun. Like, you know, maybe I'm going back to my ex or I'm doing this, I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Uh, Like I'm doing it for the plot, Uh, you know what I mean? Like you'll kind of ignore the fact that you know it's not something that's good for you and take on the thrill of it all because in the moment it feels really good to get some validation that we've been wanting but that validation is also at the cost of yourself and the more you become aware in these moments the more you'll be able to make the right decision possibly the decision that doesn't always feel good in the moment but the decision you know is going to create more self-love for yourself the more you'll be able to make those decisions but when you come back to yourself after a period of time please don't feel that guilt and shame that you do and don't go into a shame spiral of feeling like oh I'm just this terrible person like look at it Yes, look at it, be aware of it, acknowledge it because those feelings are valid and they're serving a purpose. But in those moments are the most important to bring yourself back to your self-love. To say, I understand why I did this and I'm here for you and I got my own back. I don't give a shit how much you have to talk to yourself. If you have nobody else to talk to, talk to your goddamn self. Literally do what I'm doing right now. Get out a camera and just start talking to yourself. Like do a voice memo or just like cry in the mirror. (laughs) I know it sounds cringe. I know it sounds cringe, but when you don't know who to go to, yourself will be there. Okay. And doing that will also allow you to trust yourself more. Like I made an episode on trusting yourself. Go watch that after this one if you haven't. But the more you stay by your own side, the more love you'll cultivate for yourself because loving yourself seems so scary until it isn't. Loving yourself seems so painful until it isn't. Loving yourself doesn't always feel good. It doesn't give you the thrill that it used to, that self-sabotaging yourself used to because like we're rewarded in society for kind of not having super strong boundaries. Even in small ways, we're conditioned to feel okay with certain things that we might not be okay with. When you finally get to the point where I don't care what any of y'all say, I'm doing me, I'm doing what makes me happy because I love myself and I know the more I listen to you, I'm gonna be unhappy. That is the most freeing experience. And I also want to say that you're not exempt from becoming a bad person. And I think that realization has really helped me because when you neglect yourself, you also end up hurting other people more. And so if you're coming here and you're like, okay, well, how do I cultivate this self-love? Like, how do I stop self-sabotaging? You need to look at your actions and you need to be grateful for the awareness you have. Because when you go through a situation that makes you question yourself, you need to stop yourself and ask, if I loved myself, what would I do? 
And how you know that the action you're taking is out of self-love is if you are protecting someone you loved, what would they do? And I know it's a little bit weird, but like sometimes we kind of put other people on a pedestal and then when it comes to us, like we don't necessarily make the decisions that a person we care about would make or, you know, if someone you really loved was in a fucked up situation and was being treated the way that you might be being treated, how would you want that person to react and react that way? Regardless of how you feel, regardless of the emotions, what is the best thing for yourself. Doing what's right for you is not selfish and I hate how people try to make it seem like it's selfish because if it's selfish then I'm selfish and you need to get to a point where you don't care if other people call you a certain way. You don't care. It is not their life. The ways I've developed self-love has been through deep deep self-reflection and being there for myself in the times where I had no one. Also choosing something and sticking with it. The more I've stuck with something the more I've seen the ways I've like grown you know like despite the fact that maybe I didn't want to go to the gym or I didn't want to make a video or I didn't want to you know the more you stick with yourself and stick with the the decisions that you know are going to yield you long-term results the better you'll start to feel about yourself actions speak louder than words you can't affirm the love to yourself and just magically have it appear if every single action you take is self-destructive. That doesn't make any sense. And I'm not going to allow you to live in that delusion. I'm saying this to myself too, y'all. So <laughs> sorry about the harsh delivery today, but I'm just saying, okay? You also have to realize the lesson out of everything. When people come into your life, you must turn it into a lesson of self-love so you can grow from it. You're not going to allow this thing to drag you down and keep you down because this thing was simply meant to illuminate a part of you that you didn't fully accept. You know the actions you need to do in order to deepen the love you have for yourself. It's up to you to choose if you'd like to ignore yourself or if you'd like to fully accept yourself and all you are. The last and final thing I'm going to say is loving yourself is a choice. So choose yourself always. And thank you guys so much for tuning into this week's episode of the Improvement for Imbeciles podcast. I love you guys so much and life has been kicking my ass recently, but I'm going to learn from it. And so thank you guys. Be sure to like this video, subscribe, and do all of the things to push me out into the algorithm. I love you guys and I hope this video helped you as much as it helped me because girl, I needed it. Bye y'all.